Hello and welcome to FEM Expert. Today we will present you a basic tutorial in which we will generate a beam with shell type elements in ANSYS. The profile of the the profile of the beam that we selected is going to be a rect hollow rectangular one. Uh, before I explain all the details of it, I you must be taking care in, you must be careful when you're using the shell type elements because they are they have some limitation these type of elements are able to simulate structures that have one of the dimensions is much more in comparison to the other two that means you can simulate a tabletop you can simulate a, a profile but you cannot simulate for example a rectangular full profile because it, it you don't you simply don't have those properties in there in this situation, when you simulate a hollow rectangular profile, you can actually separate each one of the sides of the profile and consider them as little sheets of metal. So that's why we are able to simulate this type of profiles with shell. I'm going to explain you there's three main ways to do that. They're all good, but one of them provides more accurate results. And the, the the best way and the most the most recommended uh, way to simulate any type of metal sheet profile is to extract the medium fiber and then assign the thickness on both sides to half of the thickness towards the inside and half of the thickness towards the outside. You do that by just simply telling how much is the thickness and putting an option and saying that your the the middle fiber that you model is actually the middle fiber of the profile. The second option is to model the profile throughout the outside dimensions of it yeah. and then assigning all of the thickness towards the inside of it. This is a very easy way to do work because most of the times you know the outer outside dimensions and you just assign the thickness towards the inside. And finally another alternative is to do it the, the other way modeling the inside of the profile and assigning the thickness towards the outside. These two me methodologies, the last two, they present some deviations and in, in stiffness. So they, they have a direct relation on the estimation of the displacements and deformations. And this one also, but it kind of represents a, um, a compromise. Whatever you gain because you put the thickness on the outside, you're losing because you put the you put the thickness on the inside. Obviously, it's not the perfect situation, but it's a simplified way to simulate uh, or a more accurate way to simulate a beam. Now we'll start with ANSYS, and before we going on, I'm going to show you the problem that we're going to analyze today. We chose to simulate a 480 by 40 millimeter profile with 4 mm thickness. By extracting the middle fiber we have to model a 76 mm profile and 36 mm profile on which we will assign the thickness on both in the inside and the outside. So now we gotta go to ANSYS and the first thing we have to do is define the, the key points of the profile. So for the, in order to do that we go to preprocessor, modeling, create, key points inactive coordinate system. As we said, the coordinate system is the one that you see on the screen. Inactive CS, so the first point is going to be 0, 0, 0. We'll apply, want this window to be able to see. The second point is going to be on, on the Y axis, so it's going to be 0 on this and 36 divided by a thousand because we're working on meters. Apply, as you can see, Oops, sorry. I'm gonna do it again. The first one is gonna be zero 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 apply, and the second point key point is gonna be thirty-six divided by a thousand. So now we have two key points. The third one is gonna be seventy-six divided by a thousand and thirty-six divided by a thousand. Apply. And the fourth one is gonna be on 76 and on y is going to be 0. We hit OK and we have the four points for the middle medium fiber. Now we have to create a line 
between them. So for that, we're gonna go to, go to grid lines, lines, straight line between this and this, this and this, this and this, this and this. Okay. So now we have the profile of the rectangle, but we have to well, we have to obtain the shells. We right now we don't have any any shells. We just have uh, beams. So I'm gonna show you uh, the fast way to generate the beam, the long beam. And this is we're gonna copy the, the uh, one of these key points to the length of the beam. So in order to do that, we're gonna go to copy key points. Let's say key point number two. We're gonna copy it on the Z direction because X Y Z on the Z direction at one meter. Okay. As you can see, the two and the fifth, and the, the second and the fifth nodes are on the same position, so you can't really see them. So we're gonna go to the isometric isometric view. We're gonna plot lines go again to the isometric view sorry we're gonna plot uh, we're gonna do the G plot that's better G plot and we have the lines and we have the key point of the end that will be representing the end of the beam so in order to we're gonna create a line between it a straight line between this and this okay so now what we're going to do is we could do the same. We could create and create areas and stuff, but an easiest, the, an easier way, in, and I'll, that will teach you another, another operation, is to go to operate, extrude, and we're gonna extrude the lines along a line. So we're gonna select the four lines of the profile. We hit OK, and then we're gonna select the other line. And what we'll obtain is the areas it will extrude our model and we will have the proper the proper beam okay so when you do that you gotta be careful We're, I'm gonna show you a thing you can list lines but there's there's a, a common bar that's ll list that's line listing comma and you put p which is peak and you'll see that in each position there's one line if you go to unpick you'll see that the arrow changes and you can unpick we'll go back to pick again but where we created the extru extrusion there are two lines at the same point this can create a lot of problems especially when you're working with more complex models so after you do some kind of operation like this what you need to do is go to numbering controls go to merge items here you select key points hit ok and that will merge any kind of lines that are in the same position and they're repeated so we'll do the same L, L list comma p and then you will see that here there's only one line one line one line and one line we don't need to list them we're gonna do the g plot again and we have here our model. Okay, so now that we have the model, we have to define the first thing to the element types at the D delete at shell 181 for nodes. Okay, we close this. There are no real constants for this element type, so we'll skip it and go to material properties. We'll go to material models. The material model number one is going to be a structural, linear, elastic, isotropic, the properties, steel properties, 0 0.3. This is Young's modulus. PRXY is Poisson coefficient. If you have any questions on these things, you can go to the help. And the density is going to be 7,850 kilograms per cubic meter. Once we have this defined, we have to define the section of the beams, the section of the shells. In this case, the section of the shell is the four millimeters. So we have to go to lay up, edit, the delete. And here we can say four millimeters. 
the id1 the thickness is going to be 4 divided by a thousand the material like this is the same and here's where the, the answers ask you if the offset is going to be towards the inside the outside or you can put it in an input location so if you model through the mid plane you can do the offset mid plane that's going to do the offset towards half of the thickness to the top and half of the thickness to the bottom so we hit ok so up to this moment we have everything we have the model created we have the element properties the material properties the sections we just have to tell us is that this beam has those properties so if we're going to do that we go to meshing mesh attributes picked areas we pick all and we have material number one element type one uh, and section one we hit, we hit ok and we assign those properties to this beam now the next step is to mesh this beam in order to mesh that we're going to use the mesh tool and we're going to set the size control on all of these lines the, the biggest size that you can have in order to have a high quality mesh is 36 based on the dimension I've shown of one on the sides we're going to select one that's going to be 10 millimeters divided by a thousand we hit ok we pick up the last window with a recent hidden icon and then we're going to mesh the areas with a mapped measure we're going to click on mesh and we're going to do a pickle here we have the very nice high quality mesh of our model our next step is to put the, the restrictions and apply the forces so now we go to solution define loads apply structural displacements well here on the displacements applyment we're gonna first of all we're gonna do a listing a, a plot of the lines I'm gonna zoom in here you're gonna do it with applying this dynamic mode and just using your mouse we're gonna apply the restriction on these lines here when you have a more complex model you have a lot of options you could apply restrictions on key points on nodes on areas and so on but for this example we're doing it on we're gonna do it on lines I'm gonna select these four lines just click OK all degrees of freedom and we're gonna put zero as you could see you have all of these restrictions apply there. I'm gonna go back to whole model and for the forces and momentums we're just gonna apply an inertia the gravity I'm gonna put just the, the we're gonna check how this beam behaves on its own gravity we're gonna click on global and acceleration is gonna be 9.81 this is the meters per square second and it has to be introduced as a positive value because it's an uh, inertial acceleration it doesn't matter if you make a mistake here because anytime you change this value you just come back and change change it to minus or plus whatever you have and you'll be fine so when we as soon as you do that you'll see you have here the restrictions and the acceleration is as an arrow put on, on towards the towards the positive y direction We're, i'm going to show you one thing right now if we go to plot element we can see we can see actually the the beam and if we go to plot controls style size and shape and we activate the each shape uh, option we'll see the thickness of it as i mentioned before if we look i think it's the front view and fit the view we'll ha we'll have exactly what i told you we have the we'll, we'll, we'll use that g plot again 
we have the lines of the middle fiber which are our actual shells and the thickness has been applied towards the outside and the inside the same way as we showed it on that previous uh, graphic okay so now I'm gonna go to the isometric view again and we'll, the next step we have to do we can check if the analysis type is in a static and then go to solve current ls and click ok now we have it the solution is done I'm gonna go to the general post-processing read results last set and now we're gonna plot these results counter plots nodal solution degree of freedom and the vector of summations and here we have our beam properly deformed by its own weight and this is the value that has been deformed and it looks pretty it looks actually pretty accurate I'm gonna go to fit view isometric view again and I'm gonna do a uh, null solution again stress I'm gonna go to von Mises stress and again on the von Mises thing we have some pretty nice results the biggest tension is where the embedment takes place which is obvious and where the the arm length is the highest it's symmetrical so everything looks pretty pretty nice so at this point I'm gonna show you one more thing this is the first time we're gonna use that it's gonna it's, it's called a vector plot it shows you the translation rotation or whatever property you have based on vectors and it can be very easy very useful when you're using uh, when you're trying to interpret some kind of data some of some of the results so we're gonna do the vector mode we're gonna leave all these options normal the only thing we're gonna do is degrees of freedom translation u and after clicking ok it might take some time because sometimes this can be tricky well what this this plotting does it shows you the actual the displacement of each node and in which which direction he, it goes sometimes can be very useful especially when you have shapes or situations that cannot be easily interpreted okay and um, well now I'm going to go to quit quit no save and now you know how to how you can model a beam utilizing shell type elements and you have the basic criteria to start utilizing the shell type elements correctly we will we will hope you enjoyed this presentation and we would like to thank you for your attention for more tutorials please visit our community and follow us on the social media